What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and I am back for some more Esperanto slash World of Warcraft lessons. Now before I break straight into this one, I just want to um, let you guys know something. In one of my previous lessons, I made an error regarding the use of Teor versus Tiu. I've now gone back and corrected that error, I've removed that part from the lesson, so for future people so they don't like learn a mistake that's been given by me. Um, basically the mistake was that I said that Teal is used for people. That's apparently incorrect. I spoke with many people about this. A lot of people had the same mistake that I made. Apparently it's a common misconception, but Teal is used for both people and also animals. So you can say Teal estas homo, you can also say Teal estas besto. So just forget that little bit of my lesson from previously. Sorry if I've if I've completely screwed up on that one. I'm really sorry about that. But anyway, let's continuing onward. We learn something new every day. I've been speaking this language for years, and I've been under like using that as an error for like years. So sorry about that one. Hey, right, I'm going to chase this guy down. Anyway, let's do some revision, shall we? So first up, what was the present tense for fly? It was flugas. Flugas. And what was the word uh, present tense for run? It was kudas. Kudas. And what was the word for sky? It was cielo. Cielo. And do you remember the word for bridge? It was ponto. Ponto. Um, and what was the word for city? It was urubo. Urubo. And last one on the review, what was the word for serpent? Or sorry, yes, yeah, serpent, but also snake. Serpento, serpento. Okay, so I just wanted to speak about something that kind of caused a little bit of confusion in one of my previous lessons as well, and that was um, the present tense idas. In spoken Esperanto, you. One second, I'm just going to figure out what I'm going to do in here. Um. Thorough walls freed. So how do I do that? Did he give me something to free them? And I'm back. Apparently I just had to break these chains. So that's all good. Just free that wolf and I should be done. Uh, what about that one? Score. Freed all the wolves. So, eat us. So for instance, me eat us a la lago can mean I'm going to the lake or it can mean I'm walking to the lake. Okay. So me eat us a la lago can mean I went to the lake or it could mean I walked to the lake. Because when we say I walked to somewhere. We don't, in English, we don't really care about the fact that we used our feet. We're just using Man, walk as kind of, of a, I don't know, like a filler verb instead of go. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best way to explain it. But in Esperanto, if you, you don't need to specify that. You just say eat us for, you know, going, like, or walking. But if you really, really wanted to specify that you went there by using your feet, you could say pieridas, and remember what piedo means? It means feet. So pieridas means um, go, but use your feet. So walk, basically. Now, you'll see that sometimes in texts, like in some books and stuff. But the majority of people will just say mi idas a la lago when they're saying I go to the lake or I walk to the lake. What else am I meant to do around here? I've just got to keep killing these dudes. Okay. So yeah, just wanted to get that one out of the way. Now. Let's begin with our actual lesson. So I'm going to start by teaching you um, the numbers 7, 8, and 9. So the number 7 is sep, sep. And the number 8 is ok. Easy one to remember, just think of like octopus, for instance. And number 9 is now, now. This is going to go really bad. I can see this is going to go bad very quickly. I've got lots of people all over me. With uh, now, it's got like a U with like a little special, like uh, kind of like enough U on top of it. Whenever you see that U with a mini type of U on top of it, it just, that's basically just a W sound, okay? So just think of that whenever you see it. I'm just going to get rid of this Lupo, which is trying to freaking eat my face and has been annoying the hell out of me the whole time. Um, so yeah, what was the number for 7? It was Sep. What was the number for 8? It was... Ok. And what was the number for 5? It was Kevin. And what about the number for 9? It was Now. Okay. Now, what I wanted to focus on in this particular lesson... Why am I doing no damage to this guy? Nature infected. Someone thinks you are awesome. 
What? <laughs> Check this out. Someone's blessed me with something that says they think you're awesome. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so what I wanted to focus on a bit more in this lesson was the accusative case. Now, if you've just started learning Esperanto and you don't know any other languages, you'll have no idea what that is. But the best way to explain it, okay, is to give you an example. So, for instance, to say... Um, actually, I'll teach you a verb in order to help you learn this, okay? So, the verb um, present tense have is have us. So, to say... Uh, I have a you know drumstick that you eat. You say mi havas femurajon. Now, did you hear that n mm sound at the end? That n sound. That is called the accusative case, and it basically tells um, you what is the object of the transitive verb. I'm just gonna heal myself up. Now, if you're not very switched on with linguistic terms, this is gonna get a little bit um, difficult to understand. But the best way to put it is to say a verb. There is two types of verbs, okay? You have one which affects the subject, so the person saying it, and another which affects um, the the object that it's talking about. So to say, me havas, uh, for instance, struton, so, you know, ostrich, I have an ostrich, me havas struton, you're basically saying that I have, and the thing that I have is the ostrich, okay? Now, Whoa, 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 watch out for the Sotopento. Just get rid of him out of the way. You're probably thinking right now, well, that's that's really confusing. Why don't you, why do we even need that? You just, you know, you just say, I have um, an ostrich, you know? It's simple. Why do I need to specify? Everyone knows what I have. But the thing is, Esperanto is a language that was designed for everyone. And not everyone around the world has the same word order as English, okay? So in English, we say subject, I, havas, verb, um, uh, femurajon, which is the object, okay? Now, some languages will actually say femurajon, object, me, I, havas, verb, okay? So, how do we know which one to use? Well, what Zamenhof, the guy who created the language, decided to do is he decided to bring in this thing called the accusative case. So basically, that N sound that you're hearing at the end of femurajon, struton, that tells you what is the object of the transitive verb. Now, let's put, let's give you an example, okay? Let's, let's try something. So if I want to say, I have a wolf, okay? I could say, me havas lupon, or I could say, lupon havas me, or I could say, me lupon havas. It's, it doesn't matter, they, all three of those, mean exactly the same thing in Esperanto. Now, I've already specified that one reason why this exists is because people come from different language backgrounds and we have different word orders. Another reason it exists is because in poetry, for instance, the ability to be able to swap around the sentence and completely change how it visually appears but not what it means is like a massive blessing for Esperanto. It allows it to be such a beautiful and flexible language. So that's another reason for it. Now, what else am I going to do? I'm going to get another one of these hunters. So I'm going to get this guy over here. So how would I say I have, for instance, um, pants? I would say, Mi havas pantalonon. Mi havas pantalonon. Now, you're probably thinking, well, hang on, you said pants, that's plural. And then you're thinking, well, hang on, pants isn't plural. Why do we have it plural in English? See, that's a historical thing in English where I think originally, don't quote me on this, but originally back in the day with English, um, pants, like a, a pant was like one leg of the pants. So pants is actually two pant. Um, I think that's what it is. Don't quote me on that one. But it's something like that. So in the Esperanto, we don't actually like pantalono means pants, but pantalonoi means more than one pant, pants. Okay, so just... Just get that, remember that one as well, because people will pick you up on that one. I'm just going to quickly heal up. Now, I'm actually quite excited because we are almost at the stage right now where we can start doing instances. Now, instances in World of Warcraft are basically like group uh, dungeons where you go down with four other people and you take on a big boss and stuff, and that's going to completely spice up these lessons. But anyway, I think we've got that out of the way. 
we will just do a little bit more practice with the accusative case then we'll move to like a different area around here and try some other stuff so I'm just gonna hand this quest in and I'll cut it right here okay and I'm back so just gonna pick up this quest quickly here so grab that Accept. Oh, by the way, you see these two things here? So they're called codos in this game. Now, I'm pretty sure codo isn't a real word, like maybe apart from being some type of fantasy word. But these dudes here, they look like rhinoceroses. So from now on, I'm just going to call these things rhinoceroses in this game. And the word for rhinoceros in Espano is rinocero. Rinocero. So we are going to refer to them thus forward as rinoceroi because it's plural now. So let's see what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here. And, oh, someone's killed all the things around here. Let's let's take this one out. Okay, come here. Wait, wait, Vulturo. So, how would we say I have a vulture? Mi havas Vulturon. And what's another way of saying that? Vulturon havas me. Or, mi vulturon havas. So, I'm just getting you used to hearing these different constructions so you can pick up on that accusative case because it is a hell of a concept to kind of wrap your head around if you're, if you are monolingual like me and English is the only language you know because we really don't have it in English. Now, that is also partially a lie because we do in some sense, but it's very rare in English. In Esperanto, it exists with all transitive verbs. So, let's see what I've got down here. I've got a go down and see if I'm going to take out this crocodile here. So the word for crocodile in Esperanto is crocodilo. crocodilo. Now, this here, I just want to let you in on some Esperanto slang. Yes, Esperanto has slang. In Esperanto, there is a verb, um, okay, so if I, the verb for, god, how can I explain this? Okay, if I say mi crocodilas, that basically translates directly as I'm crocodiling, okay? And you're like, what the hell does that mean? Now in Esperanto, crocodiling basically means speaking your native language when you should be speaking Esperanto. So imagine you're at an Esperanto event. Everyone there speaks Esperanto and you decide that you're going to speak English to someone else even though they speak Esperanto. And you'll actually hear this common phrase where people will say, ne crocodilu, and I'll explain in later lessons what the U sound at the end of that means because I don't want to go too far in depth. But yeah, ne crocodilu means don't, you know, be a crocodile or don't crocodile. So yeah, that's just a little bit of random slang for you. I thought I'd just bring that up. So, how would you say, um, I have a camp, uh, I have a, uh, sorry, a, uh, what is it, plane strider? Mi havas kampan struton. Did you notice that I also put the accusative case onto the adjective kampan? The reason being is because remember how I said earlier in one of the previous lessons that the adjective agrees with its noun. So if the noun is plural, the adjective is plural. It's the same thing with the accusative case. If um, if the, uh, the noun is in the accusative case, so it is the object of the transitive verb, then its adjective is also in the accusative case, okay? Now the reason for that is, is because you can actually move them around. You can put the adjective in a different spot in the sentence as long as it's not confusing it with say like another verb or something. Um, and it's also just to keep things in sync across the boards. Anyway, so how would you say that same thing? but put a uh, plain strider at the beginning of the sentence. Kampan struton havas me. And how would you say, um, I have a tree, for instance. Mi havas arabon. And how would you say, I have two trees. Mi havas du araboin. Now you notice that the du, the number, it didn't change, like it didn't become dun or anything like that, because numbers in Esperanto, they don't take the accusative case. They, are, they aren't adjectives or anything like that, they're their own separate class of words. So yeah, to say I have a tree, you'd say mi havas uh, arabon. To say I have two trees, you'd say mi havas du araboin. Du araboin, remember? Everything is uh, in agreement there, so 
the what we've done is we've made it a plural and we've also made it accusative case now let's just finish these little dudes off here I'm just gonna go through some revision I know I didn't teach you many new words in this lesson the reason being is because I just wanted to focus more on this accusative case but let's let's go through some revision so what was the word for sky it was cielo and how would you say um, the plane strider runs from me okay la campa strutto curas de mi and how would you say the plane strider runs at me la campa strutto curas al mi okay cool and how would you say um, the plane strider ran at me past tense because it's about to die la campa strutto curis al mi okay very good and how would you say um, I have a crocodile mi havas crocodilon and how would you say I have five crocodiles mi havas kvin crocodiloin and let's see if you can remember that little bit of slang usage I taught you how would you say don't crocodile or don't speak English when Espano is preferred ne crocodilu ne crocodilu Okay, that's pretty much it for the rest of, uh, for this lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson, give it a like, um, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, well, I might leave your corpse at the bottom of that lago. <laughs>